Hello, and welcome to a very relaxed slash very tired episode of Tech Feedback. Annie's not here, so I'm going to do nothing but answer your burning E3 questions. Let's kick it off with the Adam Sessler video where Tech Monkey 74, super fan Tech Monkey 74, I might add, said, I totally respect both Adam and Scott, but I cannot disagree more that there is nothing wrong with the Xbox One. The Xbox One will become an overpriced Blu-ray player if it cannot connect every 24 hours. What about people with crappy internet? Well, Tech Monkey 74, here's what Adam and I were trying to get across. Uh, elements of the Xbox One and its ability to learn how you're playing multiplayer because you're connecting every 24, every 24 hours, that's something that will really revolutionize how games are played multiplayer. It, it takes into account how busy you are, how often you play, and will match you up with players that have those same constraints. The PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4, I'm still saying PlayStation 3, PlayStation 4 does not do that, at least they haven't hinted at it being able to do that because of the uh, it not always being online. So if you imagine a game like Halo, and you're playing Halo, and you only have like five minutes to play, and you play every day for five minutes, it'll match you up with other players who only have about five minutes to play every day. So that's kind of cool. All right, Carruthers100 wrote in saying, what happens in 10 years when Microsoft turns off the server and your pile of disks is now junk? Well. I mean, the same kind of thing happens with uh, your old games that on Xbox 360 or the old Xbox. Uh, they, you don't really play them. I mean, how often have you gone back and played an Xbox game? I'm gonna guess probably not a whole lot. Uh, but it is an interesting question for all the downloadable games because they will eventually probably turn off the servers. So that's a good question. That's one that I don't think Microsoft has addressed yet. Uh, GD Adversa 19 wrote in saying, is Adam Sessler okay or is voice or is his voice just gone? His voice is shot. The man was doing, I don't know, like 150 interviews a day. He was talking nonstop for uh, 10 hours a day. So that's gonna take a toll on someone's voice. And especially because of what was going on with Emmanuel Martinez asking, what's the song in the background? Yes, uh, the Rev3 Games booth was right next to a DJ. Uh, for those of you asking, it is Denise Williams' hit song, Let's Hear It For The Boy, from the motion picture soundtrack to Footloose. That's what that song was. All right, next up we're gonna talk about when I was at the uh, Xbox One press conference and the Bananinator wrote in saying, hey TechFeed, PlayStation Plus has said that purchasing the system you will instantly receive 12 free games and the one free game per month. So PS4 won that too. Yeah, I mean, they did. They, they are going to give you what they're calling the instant game collection. And uh, I think that's really cool. I think Xbox didn't talk about what they were doing. They talked about what they were doing with the 360 and how they're gonna give 360 owners two games now, kind of like PlayStation Plus, but they didn't really address what they were gonna be doing with the Xbox One. Steve2323ZX wrote in saying, Scott, you criticized the new SimCity for its DRM, but you're giving the Xbox One a pass. How did Microsoft get to you? This is something I love. I love that when uh, you have a disagreement with someone, in the gaming press, you're instantly paid off. I worked at IGN uh, for many, many years, and not once did any gaming company come to you and be like, here is money, give us a 10. That doesn't exist. I know everyone wants to think that that exists in the press, uh, it doesn't. As far as giving them a pass, I'm not giving them a pass on the DRM. Uh, I am uh, cautiously optimistic that some of their policies, after seeing how PlayStation uh, handled their, their policies will change. I do, however, think that it's very interesting that uh, third parties are hinting that even on the PlayStation 4, they're gonna have DRM. And uh, Xbox One said that, yes, the, the games, the DRM and used game policies are up to third parties, but all Microsoft is going to be, is going to have this DRM. And Sony is saying, oh yeah, our first party games, you can, you can do whatever you want with them. But they didn't say anything about third party. So that might be something to look out for. All right, next up, PlayStation 4. A lot of PlayStation 4. Everyone loves the PlayStation 4, the C3. Has tech wrote in saying, I don't understand what's going on with the PS4 backwards compatibility deal. Yeah, it's Gaikai. Um, so it's not backwards compatibility the way that we've all known. 
uh, where you you know stick your old disc into the system and then you can play it uh, because the the innards just the processors and everything it just doesn't work that way. Uh, Gaikai is a streaming service where you're going to have to download the game, your old PS3 game, and play it there. It's not launching until 2014, so it's not going to be right out the bat, right out of the gate. It's also probably going to cost you. Uh, Rocketo913 wrote and saying, I'm guessing that Microsoft are going to change a lot in order to com in order to compete with Sony. In the future, they will probably forget about Always Online and the used games thingy. Yes, uh, I, I believe some of the policies that are going on with the whole used games and, and everything on Microsoft versus PS4, I think it's going, to, you're going to see a couple changes before launch. Uh, release date, Henry Ryan wants to know, release date, holiday 2013. It's coming out this year. That's all they're gonna say right now. Uh, EA, I went to the EA press conference. That was fun, that was really fun actually. Robert Battaglia wrote in saying, I think you were a bit harsh on the sports games. Some people may wanna actually know about these games rather than skip over them because they're just the same game. I think you should round up the whole thing rather than the parts that got you excited, like a plant game and a huge bunch of nerds playing Battlefield. Uh, I didn't get excited about the nerds playing Battlefield. I did get excited about the plant game. Also, I thought it was funny that they brought Drake on to talk about uh, sports games because Drake puts out the same trash every year too. All right, N2X, uh, Qualine wrote in saying, could someone inform me on on this, but are these games coming to both next-gen consoles? Yes, uh, probably. The the uh, the EA press conference—they're a multi-console uh, company, so uh, you're probably going to see differences in DLC. That's where they dish out their exclusivity. But um, except for Titanfall, which I believe is a, is an Xbox One exclusive, so look, look out for that. Uh, another PS4. This is when I was hanging out with Max, dear friend Max. Omar Villarreal wrote and saying, really? Having your picture before racing stood out? That's cool. Just remember, the camera is not included with the PS4. That'll cost you an additional $60. Doesn't seem as much of a good deal anymore. LOL. That $4.99 price for Xbox One not sounding bad anymore. Okay. Here's what you guys also have to remember about the PS4 and the Xbox One. Nobody's announced prices for games yet. What are you guys gonna do if, say, the Xbox One, uh, a downloadable title, full retail title on Xbox One is only gonna cost you 49 bucks, whereas a PlayStation 4, the same game, is 69. That could be a possibility. It could be a possibility. Microsoft could go after PS4 with the pricing of their games to get more people to jump on board uh, and make it a better value system that way. I think I think that might be that might be a play that they're gonna pull pretty soon. So watch out for that. Uh, Django Goin, Gruen wrote in saying, uh, can the PS4 run 4K games or movies? Uh, well, the PS4 does support 4K output, but only for photos and videos, not games. PS4 games do not work on 4K. They will not output on 4K. Earthflame eight, uh, 118 wrote and saying, what are these two, why don't these two have their own show on Revision 3, get on it! Yeah, Revision 3, get on it. Max and I want our own show. We're tired of doing our weekly Comedy Button podcast. Plug. All right, let's move on to the Xbox One, hands on. Uh, Straight Jonesen wrote in saying, for all those negative press it's received, the XO will still be a good system, so I'll buy one, eventually. But I'll definitely be buying a PS4 at launch, that's a fact. Uh, yeah, I'll probably be buying an Xbox One eventually, uh, but the I got sucked into the whole hype vortex of E3 and pre-ordered a PS4. I did not pre-order an Xbox One. Also because my girlfriend will not let it in the house until they fix the whole uh, Kinect always watching you thing. She doesn't want Kinect watching us. All right, finally, we uh, I went over to Nintendo. <laughs> that was a fun trip. And... Uh, Ven Morse, Moore Steven, that's a cool name, said Super Mario 3D World is not a fixed camera game. They already showed it in single player mode and you can adjust the camera. Uh, okay, well, I asked the Nintendo rep while I was playing, is this game a fixed camera game? He said yes, and I said, so I can't move the camera around 360 degrees. He said, no, you can only move it in the, sp in the space designed where we want you to see where you are. So it's not like where uh, Galaxy, where you can go anywhere and move the camera anywhere. It is ju you're just kind of focused on your area, much like the 
3DS version of Super Mario 3D Land. Uh, the the I scene or the one sin NYC wrote and saying, how long until Nintendo pulls a Sega and just licenses their games out? It's gonna be a while, but um, if they keep on, if, if Wii U con sales continue to nosedive, they're gonna have to really reevaluate what they're doing. Uh, the games are still, the games are still Nintendo games and they're fun, but uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're a ways away from, from pulling a Sega. I'm saying they, they can make plenty of more mistakes and have plenty of more consoles that just completely fall off the face of the earth before they have to worry about becoming a, a third party license. But it, I'd say if they're gonna go that route, 17 years. Uh, Leo Go Go 619 said, did they have a demo for Super Smash Brothers? Nope, they didn't. The one game that I really wanted to play at E3, they did not have a demo for. Surprising, not surprising. It's not surprising at all. They, their, their cool games such as Super Smash Brothers are uh, always kind of held off until they're ready to be demoed for the public. So look for that next E3. I'm assuming it'll be there. All right, if you guys liked what you saw, please leave a comment down below. Or better yet, subscribe to the channel. For TFN, I'm Scott Bromley saying it's time for me to go to bed. I'm looking right at you. Oh. This feels so good. So good. Come a little closer. I'm gonna cough on you and give you the same cold that I got at E3. You want it? It might be the bubonic plague. Ah, oh, someone get me a nurse and a hot towel. But mostly the nurse. <laughs>